Well, Baylor won a football game this weekend, but does that mean the spring game was a success or is there even a way for it to be a success? You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I'm Drake Tolp from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears. I think I've got this like weird Morgan Wallen voice thing going on today as well. Uh, for our, I, I, not sure what we got going on here. I, I did bring in, though, to back me up, Chad Bothering from KWTX Channel 10. Uh, we do have to preface, Chad is a TCU grad. So him and I, we have some similarities, I guess. We've got some uh, some priorities that we, we can talk about that after the show, Chad, because I'm sure we can yeah. connect there. Uh, Chad, Covering the spring game for KWTX on Saturday, you've only been in Waco now for a few months covering the Baylor Bears, but you got to see the entire spring. Give it to me straight. I, I know it could be a, a general question, but was this spring game to you a success for a Baylor team coming off a pretty unsuccessful season? Well, first of all, dude, Drake, so happy to be on this show. And uh, to kind of keep it short, I, I don't know if you'd call it a success, really. I mean, there – you know, the play calling uh, was interesting. I know it's like a spring game. It's on TV. So, like, maybe Aranda, maybe Grimes, everyone, they're not playing all playing all their cards, you know, showing their their full hand, I guess. But, you know, I, I don't know. I would have liked to see more deep throws. I would have liked to see, you know, a little bit more mix-up. Like, just it was too much play action maybe on the offensive side. I don't know. It, it At the end of the day, is this a success? Sure, because, uh, you know, <laughs> green one, I guess. I mean, that, you know, <laughs> you can say that, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, to me, it was a little underwhelming. Boom. I think that's the word. That's how I felt Saturday. And there are Alabama football fans who walked away from their spring game feeling underwhelmed. But that's that's not when you've got an entire spectacle display for the fans on Saturday. I could have fallen asleep had I been in the shade and not in the sun. During that game, there was never a moment where I thought, oh, shoot, it clicked. This team's got the makings of a, a solid college football team, which I don't even know if you can get at in the spring game. But what what was it to you? Let's uh, since we've honed in on the bad stuff, yeah. Chad, if you can pinpoint what about the game was underwhelming. Is there a certain area or say here is where I truly did need more? Yeah, well, Drake, I mean, the, the biggest thing that everyone was looking at is, okay, who's going to get the starting QB? And, you know, are are we going to see, you know, a little foreshadowing for the fall? But, you know, I really didn't see anything that really told me either one of them is necessarily overpowering the other. And the main thing you want to look at, especially in these spring games, is are they going to air out the ball? I mean, yes, it's yeah. spring, and yes, they're not necessarily, you know, in full season form. They still have summer. They still have a couple weeks in the fall before the season starts. But you want to you want to throw a couple deep balls, and uh, the ones that they did throw, overthrown, couple underthrown balls. I if I ever did they even complete a pass in the air over thirty yards? I I don't think no, so. Not yeah. in the air over thirty yards. Thank you, right. Monterey Baldwin, for the longest reception of the game that was yeah. caught behind the line of scrimmage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I that that's what was underwhelming. I mean, if you're if this is the quarterback game, the the only story behind this game was who's who's going to be the starting quarterback. We didn't really see much of, you know, we, I don't I don't think we saw an indicator that they're ready to make a decision. Oh, and that's the weird thing, Chad, is that after this game where there wasn't a complete star at quarterback, Dave Aranda doubles down and says in the next week, we are going to name a starting quarterback as the entire fan base for the second, maybe now at least, has screamed, please don't name a starting quarterback. Um Blake Shapin, Sawyer Robertson, RJ Martinez. Is there a guy to you that has even the slightest of edge? Because what I saw Saturday was RJ Martinez be the only guy who truly surprised me. <laughs> no, I, I was, and I was happy to see RJ complete a couple of passes, get some reps in. He wasn't really in the conversation in these, you know, in the spring for the most part. It, no one really knew of him at all, really. But if you really kind of break down the numbers, he honestly. <laughs> the, he passed the best eye test, in my opinion. I think mm -hmm. he honestly looked the smoothest, and he's the most inexperienced out of all the three quarterbacks. But you probably have to give it a shape, and at the end of the day, just because he's been through the program so long, and you know, Aranda knows him, and just kind of like what you were saying, you know, Aranda, he in the press conference, he was very high on on Blake's shape, and he he talked a lot about how he commanded 
the huddle really well, better yeah. than he has in the last couple of seasons. And so, you know, maybe there are things we don't necessarily see on TV or from the sidelines, you know, there, there are things that we could miss, but I test on the field. I don't know. I don't think anyone really passed. I think it's kind of a C grade for everyone. I was right there. I, I did like the interactions between Sawyer and the offense. I thought that the, you could already tell the impact he has made in the locker room and that he's gotten to know these guys shaping through a touchdown pass and then gritted his way through the end zone, which I thought was an interesting, like a weirdly flashy thing for a guy who's 11 for 20 in your spring game to be doing. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I, I do believe this is shape and ship as we saw in the spring, the team is rallied around him. Sawyer, Here's this, Jeff. Sawyer Robertson cannot dethrone Blake Shapin because he is not exponentially better than Blake Shapin in any one category enough to dethrone Blake Shapin. Thoughts on that convoluted statement? No, I 100% agree with you, and I think everyone was looking for that. They were looking, okay, are we actually going to see this in person with their own two eyes? We didn't see that. And sure, you know, you you can't – you the box score doesn't do it justice because that – uh, you know, that what 65 yard, you know, slant yeah. route from the, that, you know, that touchdown that he did, that doesn't do anything. He, he really didn't throw the ball. He didn't throw the deep ball very well at all. And so, I mean, if you look at his tools, I think for his age and for the experience that he has coming in as a transfer new place, I think, you know, he adjusted really well. I think maturity wise, if he maybe gets some more reps, I, I think he has the character. I think he has uh, what it takes in terms of just like it, you know, hit himself, sorry, Robertson be, being a great character guy, but athletically on the field, I didn't see it. Before we get into the good stuff, Chad, cause we've started so dour on this Tuesday. Um, the, the idea that Baylor spring game was not a success. That seems like a poppy statement. Cause you think, well, shoot, so I, I bet the coaches took a lot away from this and it was the same scrimmage they did the Saturday before just to add fans and double the media. That's literally what this was. Mm -hmm. But my idea of what a successful spring game would have been is a quarterback, two quarterbacks step up and look the part. We did not see a Baylor quarterback a green clad quarterback look the part on Saturday. And when that was the, I don't want to say the weakest position, but the one position you wanted the most out of and didn't get last fall, that's a really bad sign for your six and seven air force drub football team going into a new era, big 12. That to me is why I can't label this spring game a success. And I'm glad you didn't either. Yeah, well, I I don't know. I, I don't know what would be a success. I mean, because it wasn't a Colorado spring game. I mean, no matter what happened in, in you know, in Boulder, that spring game was a success because it drew, what, 50, 60,000 people. Yeah. But Baylor, the, you know, McLean didn't have any atmosphere like that, which, I mean, can't blame it. It's, it, you know, it, it's springtime in, in Waco, it, it, whatever. But the, the thing is, I mean, th there was nothing else pointing to the fact that, man, that green and gold game, whew, I, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see anything. No, it wasn't entertaining enough. And I, I like, I personally like my green and gold games to be entertaining. Um, Chad, I'll tell you what is entertaining though. That is FanDuel.com. I bet all of you central Texans watched the hockey games last night. I bet you've been watching the NHL really closely. And I, the Maple Leafs, as you all know, from Toronto, got down four to one to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, this probably makes no sense to any of you. It makes no sense to me, but I have a roommate from Quebec. And turns out he's a big Maple Leafs fan. So at four to one, he was like, hey, it's plus 1600 on FanDuel to put $10 in the Maple Leafs to win 160. And I said, Spencer, you idiot. Don't do that. Well, lo and behold, final score five to four. The Maple Leafs came back and beat the, the Lightning in overtime. Again, does that need to make any sense to you? No. Just know that at FanDuel, you could have turned $10 into $160. And right now, there's a no sweat first bet. You go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. You don't listen to the pundits like me. You go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and put $10 on the Toronto Maple Leafs. You place your first bet up to $1,000 if it doesn't hit you get that much money back in bonus bets. There's got like all kinds of baseball props and basketball stuff and same game parlays and a thousand dollars back when you join FanDuel today. If your first bet does not hit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. If your first bet does hit, congratulations. You just turned that $1,000 into if a hundred is, if a hundred is that's, that's $16,000 that you would have gotten if you put a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. 
You do the math at FanDuel.com. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the MLB and of Locked On. All right, Chad. We've been all the, the sad, weird stuff. What did you? What did you? I mean, this is your first spring game in Waco. It's now my third, I guess, with COVID spring game in Waco, and there has never been a defining moment where I was like, "Oh yeah, I really liked that spring game." Maybe that's how it is in most mid-sized universities in America. What? What? What did you take away aside from that insanely great line for the merchandise that you liked about Saturday? Well, I, I'll tell you one thing. I think at the running back position, this team has a chance to be really deep. Uh, one of the deeper teams compared to some of the other Big 12 teams. I mean, and, you know, with some of the great additions, I thought Bryson Washington was very impressive as well. So, I mean, I I, I think that they, they ran the ball decently well for what you want to do in a spring game. You know, they don't want to, you know, burn all their guys and for, you know, for nothing. But uh, I, I really like Drake Dabney as well. I thought that he uh, was kind of the star in terms of uh, just, you know, I don't know. He tore his ACL like five months ago, and now he's just playing football again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I don't think that could be talked about enough. And he like was so that. impressive. I thought he ran really well. He 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 looked like he was running his routes really well. He looked uh, very agile on the field. I, I I was so surprised. I honestly didn't even really expect for him to spend much time out there at all. But why? I, I Chad, why is he out there? He yeah, tore his ACL five months ago. It's the spring yeah. game. They're just like, all right, yeah. we'll throw this guy 29 yard dots. Why not? It, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to take any risk in anything like this, but hey, I mean that that's a plus though. That that's something that they could walk away with saying hey, that's a success. He's an option that's that could be a little bit bigger, you know, come fall. So yeah, you gotta you gotta applaud that. There is so Chad to pull the curtain for everybody else at home. You've spent time around TCU football, around Arizona State football. I mean, you've yeah. seen you've seen the the uh, the great proud proud programs at those two universities. <laughs> is there anything that you you looked at for Baylor on Saturday and thought, okay, that's different? That's something that I, I I haven't seen on a football field that I think could translate to wins. We talked about running backs. Talked about we talked about Drake Dabney. Is it size? Is it scheme? Is there something that's just a little different about this team that gives gives this squad some moxie or an edge going into this new Big 12? That, that, that's a great thing to think about. I think so, you know, recently just came from from Tempe uh, when I was getting my master's uh, over at ASU. And that, that program really uh, took a huge shift because Herm Edwards' departure, I was there for that, covered that and everything. And so when Sean Aguano, who was the interim coach, uh, second half of the season took over, he really changed kind of the play style um, everything was a little bit more quicker. Everything was faster and he trusted his guys a little more. And I think everything was a little less calculated and everything kind of came from, you know, it, it was more of those heart and hustle plays that he started kind of integrating into the offense a little bit more versus more s scheme. Uh, what, what I saw though, in a lot of the offensive calls, kind of what I mentioned earlier, so much play action, uh, for, you know, in in a, a lot of motion, uh, you know, a lot of misdirection. You know, when you're on the sideline uh, filming with the camera, you know, I didn't film football in what five six <laughs> months, and you know, there's misdirection plays all the time. And I'm like, whoa, I I missed that. Uh, but it was almost every single play, every single time. Uh, Sawyer, Blake, uh, Martinez went back in the pocket. There was motion going on, and um, sure, that's great. But if you're going to do that, I, I don't know. Maybe I haven't learned the Baylor offense because I'm still fairly new here. But uh, it didn't seem, in my opinion, to to work consistently. Maybe they have to change things up. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chad. Yeah, me down here front row. Um, yeah. yeah, Drake Tolts uh, locked on Baylor. Yeah. Chad. Um, here's just throw this idea out there. When you're when you're doing play action with a quarterback and said quarterback is versatile running the football. That seems like an advantageous thing to do for your offense. Chad, let me let me ask you. If yeah. you're doing the play action with a quarterback who's not very good at running the football, does does that seem like if you were a defensive coordinator that you would be tripped up by that very much very often, Chad? Yeah, yeah, scratch my head on that one. Uh probably not. <laughs> like I, I don't know. You know, like I I don't know. It's I don't know what they were going for. It, it, I don't know. Do you think you were a little confused with, I mean, is this? Well, I wasn't confused because I knew the quarterback was never going to run the ball. So right. I, I felt actually pretty sure of what was going to happen every play. Yes, it, it, exactly. Uh, I, I think we've come to the same conclusion 
uh, it was repetitive. It was a pretty repetitive play calling style. Uh, no down the field shots. Everything was little screen passes or two yard slants uh, towards the middle, which can be good and they can be used right. But you, you saw it. There were multiple times because the crazy scoring and the crazy penalties in the spring games, which, by the way, a lot, a lot more penalties than I was expecting. So many in spring game. Yeah, in, in the spring game. Uh, you know, uh, there were multiple calls. I remember third and 21, uh, fourth and 19, and they do a, a two yard settle route right next to the sideline. What is that going to do? What, what are you doing? And there's nothing to lose. They didn't kick any field goals, but what, like one or two. So it's like, just freaking throw the ball down the middle 15 yards and see what happens. Trust your guys. Yeah. If it's picked off, why not? I mean, give the green team or the gold team two points to who cares. Yeah. Yeah. Random <laughs> score. I, I thought the random scoring system. So, I had dinner with Jeff Grimes on Sunday and I didn't, I made it a point to not ask him about the spring game. I just was like, Jeff, great spring game. And the first thing he says was, wasn't that scoring thing weird? <laughs> so I was like, yes, Jeff, it yeah. was. He asked me, he's like, could you make, could, did that make sense to you? And I was like, I want to be honest, I'm be honest with you. No, it didn't. Oh, yeah. But the, the PA guy would be like, yeah, add two points to the said teams. Like, all right, sweet. Let's just add two points. Then. Oh, yeah. No, in like when I was cutting highlights and stuff for our show, I was like, I'm not even going to attempt to learn this. So I couldn't even tell you what I – yeah, there's no no reason. It to made it. no sense. No. But all of this, we have we have slandered parts of the offense that probably deserve to be slandered. We have gone through guys who, who stepped up and played well, the running backs, the, the Drake Dabneys of the team. Defensively, we, we haven't gotten to that. And the spring game, in my experience – has not been built around the defense usually. This one felt more that way because of the scoring system, but it was still tough to deduce as a fan or an analyst because the scoring just was weird and funky. Did you see much from the defense that you really liked or something you were were shocked by, impressed by? I, I, I would say the, I mean, they read, they read plays well, which, I mean, sure, they're playing the same team for four or five weeks. They're playing the same offense. Uh, they seen them the entire time, and they, you know, multiple players mentioned that after the game. But at the same time, I mean, I I saw maturity still. Um, we we saw younger guys step up, and so, you know, I I don't think it was. I think at the end of the day, not a bad defensive performance at all, and uh, that's really all you can kind of uh hang your head high on, and you know that that's nothing to complain about. Uh, but the defense definitely has room to grow. Uh, they have a lot to learn, and uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. You know, th- th- I, I feel like this Baylor defense was so sneaky because when I was kind of doing some prep and looking at some things, I believe they had the second best uh, secondary in the conference last, last season in terms of uh, yards given up, if I'm not mistaken. And so, like that's yeah, that that, that that's you know they're not a broken record at all. They they don't have broken pieces necessarily. I mean, they they have the tools, but if they're going to execute it, they need help from both sides of the ball. So. Yeah, the I, I do see an, a reinvigoration with the defense with Matt Pallage at, at D.C. and the way the energy the guys have brought to the field. What did you see energy effort, even coaches getting into it wise from field level on Saturday where you were? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was looking at Pallage a lot. And I mean, you know, he, he brings that extra factor, that energy, that encouragement. I, I think he's he, he players love him in, uh, you know, every single media availability uh, talking to the, uh, to the secondary guys, uh, the safeties linebackers uh, this past Friday, it, we all asked him about Pallage and they said the same, the same thing. They are so happy. He's in Waco. He's that he's back. And, you know, he will obviously learn so much, uh, especially with Dillingham and everything. He, I, I guarantee you, he is coming in with, uh, you know, so much more knowledge than he did uh, when he was previously here. And so, uh, they, they love him. I mean, and that's what you want to see, you know, he's still getting back into the system and everything, but, uh, you know, that that's a win that that's a win that he's back here. It, it's a win. And I, I, I saw more energy. I saw more hustle, uh, from a defense than expected. And the defense, if you, if they, they were two separate teams, let's say it was a different school. You say this defensive team is Baylor. Like, wow, that this team actually enjoys playing with each other more than the offense. That's what you see from the field level. You see that the defense were, they, they were just more in tune with each other And clearly, you know, that that's the conclusion that you would probably come to as well. But yeah, not, not that's, bad. That's big. I love it. That's where well, you needed more of that last year and you have more transfers defensively too. So to see a cohesiveness there, cohesiveness there is big. Um, Chad, the, 
before we get you out of here, Dave Aranda has some of the more interesting press conferences of any coach in America. I, as slow as they can be from time to time, they were once much, much slower, by the way, his first couple of years. What are your, uh, what are your thoughts early on your first couple of months in spring ball being around Dave and his program? <laughs> he, uh, he's very methodical. And yeah. when he speaks, he, he really takes time. It, it's like, you could ask him, Hey Dave, how you doing? Yeah. And he's he, going to, he's, he's going to appreciate the question, by the way, he's going to say he appreciates the question. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Which, and you, I think he's, he's very nice. I haven't personally had the chance to, you know, shake his hand, meet him yet, but, um, he, he seems like a very nice guy. And, uh, but yeah, he, he's, he's a, he's a thinker and that can hurt you and help you. Uh, but you know, cause sometimes when you're in these situations, uh, you, you just got to not think. And I obviously, you know, he knows what he's doing. I think he's, he's had great success in the you know short time he's been here in Waco. But um, when you're talking about the press conference, man, he, he's funny. I, I love personalities like him. He's one of the more entertaining guys. He's not just, he's not just going to give you something. He's going to really, think about what he's going to give to you. And, you know, for us guys in media, that's great. <laughs> I love it. He makes for some really intriguing sound bites that go right over my head, but take oh, yeah. some analyzation. Um, Chad, have you been to Georgia's yet? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was, so I was actually there uh, this past weekend um, or no, on Thursday, uh, I, I got to meet Kim Mulkey. Uh, she, <laughs> her, her LSU title was celebrated uh, with some of her old Waco friends and her family that's still here. Uh, went to Georgia's dude. I, I freaking love Georgia's man. You're Georgia's guy. Oh, brother. Every week I go over Thursday. It's funny to me that they, they showed that their true colors, Kim Mulkey. They didn't invite her to the real Georgia's. They invited her to the Hewitt one. What a yeah. slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. You only get the real Georgia's. If you go to Baylor, if you get, you don't go here. You get the Hewitt Georgia's where nobody else goes. It's the dark yeah. side. Yeah. Um, oh, that first at George, I, I was a fan of the Hewitt one. Um, shout out to Kyle Cetrano. I love that dude, man. He, he he's a solid guy, and uh, also he's a horned frog. So uh, we we connected. <laughs> Chad, I have worn a TCU jersey one time in my life, and photos were taken, and it has since gone Baylor viral. I have yeah. taken the flack, and I have done everything I can. So we we could we have done something similar in in our lives, as I alluded to earlier in the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> but as as a foodie in the food town Waco is, what is your favorite restaurant so far? Oh, oh my gosh, man! I uh, I I could talk. I could go on for hours. Uh, I I, I love Moroso. Uh, Moroso is great. Take my girlfriend there a couple times. Uh, honestly, Georgia's is such a great spot. And I I went to the Hewitt one. Maybe I should go to the other one. What what, what is it on? Is it a uh, Spate? You got to know this stuff, Chad. Yeah. Welcome to Waco. Georgia's yeah. on Spate. Yeah, dude, take me there. Take me for a beer there, and maybe we'll learn it. So, <laughs> big yeah, guys on there. Yo, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, oh dude, um, health camp, dude. I love health camp. I went there uh, last week, got a shake pretty solid. Um, yeah, I have a whole long list of stuff. Um, is it Schmaltz's? Is that the sandwich? Yeah. Place? yeah. A little sandwich yeah. shop. Yeah. Yeah. I, dude, I, I love food, man. One, one of my favorite things. Uh, yeah. Waco is a great spot for it, Chad. Glad to have you here at KWTX as well. Um, if you want to check out, if the folks who listen today want to check out your work, your Twitter, or on Channel 10, where can they go to see you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right on my name right here, uh, at Chad Botherine. Um, rhymes with tangerine. If, uh, but, dude, you nailed the pronunciation, by the way. I, I applaud you on that. Um, it, ch check out the KWTX uh, app. Uh, our website and uh, for sports on channel 10 we're usually on at six o'clock and 10 o'clock uh, every night i'm anchoring the weekends so uh yeah i'm, I'm there almost every night <laughs> i love it for those that listen today thank you for making locked on baylor your first listen every single day go drop a follow for chad and come back tomorrow as we continue to break down the baylor spring game the quarterback battle and jalen bridges the fifth and final starter for baylor basketball is gone and i think he's gonna stay in the nba all that and more on locked on. Thanks again for making your first listen to this one. Baylor.